Hey you two, Pokey Soap here. So obviously, I'm a Pokemon TCG collector. If you can't tell from the channel or my Instagram, which is at Pokey Soap, you should totally check it out if you get the chance. I have made it my goal to collect every single Pokemon TCG set released here in the great US of A. So English only, babes, English only. I am currently sitting at 19 out of 70 sets complete, so at about 27% of my goal. So I started pursuing this journey specifically about a year ago, and I've really been enjoying it. Like, it feels like so awesome to slip that last card you into your binder. It's like, mm, that like, Umbreon holo just going into this, this, just going into that binder. It's just like, yes, mm, the good, the good feeling right there. So I'm gonna help you towards that goal of completing your own set. So yes, let's go. So first, you're gonna need something to put your complete set in, a binder of some sorts. Please do not get one of those measly one pocket binders or four pocket binders. You don't have enough room. Those measly one pocket binders, like, don't even touch those. Those will damage your cards and will not even come close to fitting a complete set. Unless you're doing like a tiny set, like, um, like Legendary Collection or something. But even then, you should get a better binder for those sets. And also the four pocket binders, they just, in my opinion, don't display sets very well and don't have enough room to properly store and display your set. Because you want to be proud of your set. You want to make it, like, awesome, right? So you need to ask yourself, what set or sets am I going to go for? Do I want to complete just one set? Do I want to complete every single X and Y set? Do Are you insane like me and want to complete every single Pokemon set released? That is up to you. So if you're looking to complete just one set, I recommend something like a nine pocket page binder. Just like even like um, one of the Ultra Pro ones or um, one of the uh, like the Pokemon ones, you know, that they're like they have like the picture of the set on the front, like a like the Primal Clash one has a Groudon on the front and Kyogre on the back, like those are good. Um, but also even just like a regular binder is really good. Um, an Ultra Pro binder is really good because they're like really high quality and they store your cards really nicely. But they're also really, really expensive. So if you're like me, you want to complete like every single set, then I um, say no to the Ultra Pro binders because they will get very expensive very, very quickly. So I um, have a lot of D-Ring binders, which are like the old fashioned binders you see at like Office Depot and stuff like that. So you can go to your like local Walmart, Target, Staples or whatever and get like a four inch or a five inch D-Ring binder, which is super, super important. Um, the loot binders can actually hurt your cards. Um, this has happened like you'll be flipping through the cards and then the, the pages will become will just like come undone and it is like super super annoying. You're just like no my sets they're like everywhere and it just don't. The D-ring binders keep your cards really really flat, which is really really helpful for keeping them stored safe and sound. Um, yeah, so D-ring binders are your friends. And yeah, um, so like a four inch or a five inch binder might cost you around twelve dollars. But um, a four inch or a five inch binder can hold about like, I have one, I think it's something like about 10 sets right now, where an ultra pro binder can hold like either one or two sets and costs like $20. Um, so basically um, you're making, you're like saving a ton of money by going with the standard D ring binder. You're not just dropping all that cash. And also like for the money you made up, you can go buy more Pokemon cards. That's really the goal here, right? It's just Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards is what we want. Um, and you're like, but how do I actually fill my um, standard D-Ring binder? Like, there's no pages. What do I do? Well, you can buy pages for your D-Ring binder. Like the uh, Ultra Pro 9 Pocket Pages, which you can find pretty much uh, at Walmart or Target. They're in the card section. Um, they usually come in packs of 25 and they work great for keeping your cards safe and sound. So. Um, in addition to just having pages in your binder, it's really good to get sleeves for your um, ultra rare cards and your other really, really rare cards. Just like ultra pro sleeves, they sell them at um, Target, Walmart, wherever. You'll see them in the card aisle, just like the ultra pro um, pages. Yeah, they're really cool. I like the matte ones because they slip in and out of your binder really nicely. So if you want to take a card out and take a picture of it or something like that, it's really, really nice <laughs> to do that. Um, the sleeves are really important because they prevent binder wear, which is actually a thing. Um, cards and binders do get dinged up and do get scratched up just from rubbing against the plastic a lot. And it's really real, like if you take your cards in and out of your binders a lot, you'll ding the edges doing that. And it can really like take a card from mint condition to like near mint or lightly played very quickly from just taking it in and out of a binder. So sleeve your EX cards, kids. Sleeve them up and make them nice. So you're right, okay, Pokey Soap. You've talked about how to like put your cards and stuff. 
but I don't have any cards. Like, what do I do? Um, so if you want to get cards and want to complete sets, I recommend first um, keeping yourself focused on one task or focusing on one set at a time because that's really, really important in helping you complete your goal is to stay focused on your goal. So for example, I'm going to complete Ancient Origins because I really, really like Ancient Origins. Fun fact, I have actually completed Ancient Origins. It's a cool set, but I want to complete Ancient Origins again for some reason. I don't know why. So first, I'd find a set list online of that set, which is as easy as Googling Ancient Origins set list. It's just, it'll pop right up. Um, Bubblepedia is a great resource for this. Uh, there's a whole database full of Pokemon cards. Obviously, Bubblepedia has so much information about Pokemon. It's amazing. Um, they'll show you, like, the Japanese set versus the English set, and also will list all the weird variants of cards in the set, like all the theme deck exclusives and stuff like that, which is really, really helpful. It also shows the, you the set symbol, which is awesome. Um, if you need like a more visual look at your set and you want to see scans and just images of Pokemon cards so you can like picture your set laid out better in a binder, you can go on um, PokemonCards.com. It's spelled P-A-M-N Cards.com. <laughs> it's like great because you can see all the high quality scans of the Pokemon cards and it's really, really cool. You should check out PokemonCards.com. It's great. I love it so much. Um, so after finding a set list, if you have cards already, I'd look through and find what Ancient Origin cards I actually have and pull those out from my binder or bulk that I might have lying around. Then go through and check off all the Ancient Origin cards I currently have in my collection. So maybe I have all the common cards from Ancient Origins or all the uncommon cards. Just like those will be checked off the list. Don't have to worry about those cards anymore. Like all the other duplicates aside for trade or whatever. So finally I open up my trusty binder and put each of those cards in its proper place. So it kind of gives me a visual look of how far I am along in my collection. But you're like, hey Pokey Soap, you fool. I don't have any Ancient Origin cards. What if? I don't, I, I, I want to complete the set, but I don't have anything. I say look no farther than a booster box. Okay, this varies from set to set. For older sets like base set or the Neo sets, do not buy a booster box. Those things will cost you like $2,000 just go with singles. But for something more current, like Ancient Origins, a booster box is a great way to get a jump start on collecting that set. A booster box will run you between like um, $90 and $100, which is a lot, a lot of money, I know. It's very expensive, but it works down to being like $2 a pack, $2.25 I think a pack, versus $4 a pack, so it's actually a very cost-effective way of completing a set. And also you're guaranteed EX cards and full art cards in the booster box. There's no set guarantee with the X and Y sets. I've seen people pull like one full art out of a box, three full arts, four full arts. It just kind of depends on your look at the draw with any pack or anything, Pokemon product in general. Um, opening a booster box, you'll most definitely get all the uncommon and common cards. So you can just kind of get those out of the way very early on. Um, but you're also, as I said, you're guaranteed EX cards and full arts, which are often the hardest cards to get to complete sets. And maybe you'll even get a secret rare, which would be amazing. And also, like, if a booster box is too expensive, I recommend going for an elite trainer box or just some packs instead. So after you've built up a nice foundation for your set, do not buy any more packs. Stop buying packs to fill those gaps. So like, no more packs. Say to yourself, okay, I have three cards left, I need to complete Ancient Origins, or 10, or 15. It's time to stop buying packs. Maybe 15's like still okay, but if they're all EXs and full arts, then stop buying packs, like right there. So you have maybe like, um, say you have like Lugia EX, Giratina full art, uh, Skeptile EX Full Art and Mega Skeptile EX Full Art. Those are like the last four cards you need to complete the set. Um, you're going to be tempted to buy more packs to try and pull them. No, don't do that. Bad. Bad kid. Um, so actually let's not talk about the ones I just mentioned. Let's talk about Hoopa EX Full Art, which is probably the most expensive card I believe in Ancient Origins currently. Maybe um, the Mega Rayquaza Full Art is also kind of in that area or the Secret Rare Trainer's Mail. But for now, let's say it's Hoopa is the most expensive in this set. Um, I've seen it go for um, about like anywhere between like $20 and $30 about the time of this video's release. Um, so basically, you could buy $30 worth of packs and just be like, hey, I'll buy like two of those blisters and some loose stuff. That's $30 out of your pocket. Looking and you're like, I'm gonna pull that card and oh, no, you know, you just get a bunch of duplicates. And you're like, well, I, I'm sad now. I'm like, yeah, I would be sad too because I could have just went online and bought the card for $30 and I wouldn't have had to waste that money just opening packs. You might have got something else for trade, but is it really worth it in the end when you just get just junk that you didn't need? <laughs> so it doesn't really sound too great. So just go buy your singles off of a website like TCG Player or eBay. 
Um, I don't really recommend using Troll and Toad because Troll and Toad is kind of weird about condition on their cards as a collector condition is really important to me. But Troll and Toad, um, their definition of what a near mint card is, which is basically a pack pulled card or a card that's very close to being pack pulled so that might have like, a few dents on it. Not dents, but little like whitening marks on the back. Um, is very wishy-washy. I've gotten cards that are considered near mint that have like tiny creases on them and have like dirt and a lot of edge wear and it's like no it's roll and toad. This is not near mint. Um, TCG player is my favorite because uh, through using TCG player you're actually supporting local card shops and small businesses and it's really good and um, yeah. So support your local card shops kids. Make them happy um, and also just buying singles or trading with your friends is much more cost efficient in the end than buying single packs. That's why I do not do pack opening videos anymore is because they just got way too expensive for me as a collector when I could have been just spending that money on singles that I needed versus just spending a ton of money on packs and also just like the recent like sensationalism with opening um, like hundreds of packs is just like way too much for me to handle. Like I cannot drop $400 on Pokemon cards and do a shock opening video like uh uh that's not for me. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and also, this is pretty much always how I finish up my sets. Like, I don't think I've ever finished a set by a pack with a pack pull before, only through buying singles. Like, yeah. And also, singles do add up, but um, buying singles doesn't mean you have to buy them all at once. Completing a set does take time. Like, if I have to complete Roaring Skies, and it's like, oh snap, I need to buy a Shaman Full Art. Just save it for that Shaman Full Art. Like, maybe put away like $10 each month, and then by the end of like nine months or whatever, <laughs> whatever price the darn thing will be in a few months, um, you can put down the money then and buy it. So it's kind of like an accomplishment you can work towards. So obviously, I can't just drop like hundreds of dollars now and complete a bunch of sets, because that's just a little ridiculous for me at least. So yeah, completing sets do take time. Don't worry if like your uh, set's taking a really long time to complete because that's just a part of the process. But it's very, very fun and I really recommend it. So yeah, please do it at your own pace and most importantly, have fun completing your sets. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from it about completing sets in the Pokemon TCG. Yay! If you have any questions about anything, please sure to leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. Happy collecting! Pokesobots, go forth and complete those sets. I believe in you! Boop!